Hello and welcome back. Today is day two of our solving quadratics unit. Today we'll be using the zero product property to solve area word problems. Just a reminder, a copy of the handout is provided in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. Oh yeah, it's that time again. We have some math problems here and we need you to do them now. Pause the video, complete the problems, and return to the video when you're done. Property for a couple of them. So remember from yesterday that A times B equals zero. That means if that happens, then we A should be equal to zero and B should be equal to zero, or B should be equal to zero. So in this problem, this is like our A term and this is like our B term. All right, so that means we're going to set both of those equal to zero and solve that equation to find my solution. So let's set that one equal to zero and solve that. Plus one, not too bad there. We get 3x equals one, divide both sides by three and x is equal to one-third. Done. Okay? For the other question, let's set b equal to zero. So now let's set the other term equal to zero. So that binomial x plus five, set it equal to zero, and solve that one to find my other solution. So I'll subtract five from both fives is my equation, and x is equal to negative five. So I'm not gonna check my work right now, but I could check my work to make sure that's true. Let's try problem number two. That's a trinomial, so we have three terms there, and it's a quadratic, so that means I can factor this probably. Let's check and see if we can do that. So we know that we're gonna have m times m, my 16, this term right here. Because that's a negative, remember, recall that our signs are gonna have to be a plus and a minus. So we know that the signs are gonna be plus and minus, but let's figure that out in a second. So what are your factors of 16? 16 is 1 and 16. Ooh, that's messy, sorry. 1 times 16, 2 times 8, or 4 times 4. But <clears throat> remember that I need to make a 6m, so the 8 and the 2 looks like that'll work. So 8 and 2. And now is when I would check my signs. So again, remember, um, I need a positive 6, so that means I'm going to have to have a positive here and a negative here. You can check your work real quick if you need to, but that's our answer, so let's zero product property again. So zero product property, m plus 8 equals zero, and then solve that equation. Not too bad. Sorry, I got the sniffles today. m equals negative 8. Done. Or, let's do the other problem. Set zero product property again, so set that equal to zero, and solve that little equation. And we're done. We have our two answers here. So m is equal to 2. All right. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. I don't think so. But I can check my answer if I need to. This last question. So take a look at this one. This one is looking a little bit different. And let's review. We, we should know how to solve this from earlier in this year. So if we had a problem like this, what do I notice here? I notice that there is no B term. There's no term here, or sorry, no linear term. We're missing the term that has just the X in it. So now, as soon as I see this, my hint is just to solve this like I would solve like a simple algebra equation. So let's isolate X squared. So let's isolate the X. So how would I do that? So for this one, let's add nine to both sides of my equation. This works out nicely, so I'm gonna get 3x squared is equal to nine, and you will, <coughs> you will have some of these on your homework today, so make sure you pay attention right now. And then I would divide both sides by three, so I'm still isolating my term, so I would isolate that, so I get x squared is equal to three. And now recall, how do we get rid of the x squared, or how do we get rid of the square term? The square, so we're gonna Take the square root of both sides. And remember, we have a plus or minus on this problem. So my answer for this problem is x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. So again, earlier in this year, we solved some, like probably when we were doing Pythagorean theorem or some other problems, we started doing problems like this. All right, so it's just a little review. But you're going to see this again. I'm going to keep reviewing it as we go. Problem will try. Um, it says, find the length and the width of each rectangle. Uh, given the area. So we know in this problem, we know what the area is. Perfect. Um, the area of this rectangle is 66 inches squared. We also see some side lengths there. We got one side length x and the other one is x plus 5. Um, again, remember, 
as soon as I I hear a problem about this, I'm like thinking, what do I know about rectangles and what's the formula for area of rectangles? So in this problem, I know that the area of a rectangle is always going to be length times width. So we should know that. Remember that. We, I think we learned that back like in third grade. All right. So now, now that I know that, I'm going to look at this problem and be like, well, I have a length and a width. I have a length here and I have a width here. And the other thing that I notice is there's a relationship between the width and the length. So for instance, if you notice, this length is x. The other one is x and then 5 more. So then we have 5 more. So I know there's a relationship between those two. So I'm going to make a little table real quick, and I'm going to kind of sketch some things out here. So if I was trying to solve this problem, first thing I notice real quick is that I can just kind of start guessing numbers and see if I can figure out what this answer is. I know I'm trying to make an area of 66, and I know there's a relationship between my length and my width. So let's try it. Let's guess a number. Let's just guess and see if we can figure this out. So what if I, what if my width was 1? So if my width is 1, then the length would have to be 1 plus 5, which would just be 6. And then what would the area of that rectangle be? That would just be my area is going to be 6. I'm going to multiply those together. All right, well, that's not the answer. The answer was supposed to be 66. So let's try another one. What if my width was 2? I was going to increase by 1. Then my length should be 5 more than that, which would be 7. And now we're going to get 7 times, because length has width, is, is going to be 7 times 2, which is 14. Hmm. We're getting closer. We're still not to the 66 that we need, but we can keep trying. Um, I can try 3. Let's see if 3 works. If you have a width of 3, then your length would be 5 more than that, which would be 8. And together, that's going to be uh, 24. So we're getting closer. We're not there yet. So it looks by just increasing by 1 every time is not working. Let's increase a little faster. Uh, let's increase by 5. So what if I went to my width is 5? So that means my length should be 5 more than that, which is 10. And that would provide an area of 50. All right, we're still not there, but it looks like we're getting closer. Let's try one more. So my width is 6, and my length would have to be 5 more, which would be 11. So my the area of this would be 66. Oh, so we're done. This is what we were looking for. We were looking for the area of the rectangle that was equal to 66. So we have it there, and we know that when your width is 6, so when x equals 6... My length had to be 5 more, so that would be that my length would be 11, so now that would provide an area of 66. So that's one way to do this problem, all right? Kind of a cool way. We're just going to guess numbers and see if we can get the answer. But I'm going to show you a different way of doing this problem. Now, some of you are probably like, okay, so there's a faster way or there's, a, there's another way of doing this? Yes, of course, there's always another way. Um, so let's try this problem. I'm going to leave what I had up there so we know the length times width equals the area. But now in this problem, we know what our length and our width is. So we can say, all right, this piece will be our length and this or this width and this piece will be our length. So one thing we can do is just substitute those in right away. So my length would be, well, this would be x plus 5. My width would be just x. And the area that we were trying to get for an answer is going to be 66. Perfect. All right, so now we have a math problem and we have something that we can solve. So like, well, I'm looking at this like, I don't know how to solve this, but I do know one thing. I know I can distribute on the left side of my equation here. So I know I can multiply x times x and I can multiply x times 5. So that would give me x squared plus 5x is equal to 66. And I'm like, now this is starting to look like something we've seen before. This almost looks like a trinomial. All I'd have to do is move that 66 over to the other side. So I'll do that real quick. So now this is going to be x squared plus 5x. Subtract 66 because to move it to the other side, I have to do the opposite. And now guess what? When you're looking at this, you're like, I know how to solve these equations. Um, how would you solve this one? I can solve this by using our zero product property if I was able to factor this. So is there a way to factor this? Let me see. 
um, let's figure out, well, we have x times x, and we know here that um, 66, what are your factors of 66? Let me see, 66. I have 1 times 66, I have 2 times 33. Another one would be 3 times 22. 4 work, no, 5, 6, 6 works. 6 and 11, beautiful. All right, so let's check this problem. Um, I'm going to solve this one, so then I'm going to get, let me see. If we want to make 11, how about we do a positive 11 and a, a negative 6. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Okay, beautiful. All right, so let's solve this problem. And we're done with this one. So now I can use my zero product property. So I'm going to set both those equal to zero. So x plus 11 equals zero. And the other one is going to be or x minus 6 equals 0. So solve those problems, and we're basically done. So we know one answer is x equals negative 11, and my other one is x equals positive 6. Beautiful. So we have two answers. Now, I love, I love the algebra. When we were just guessing and checking it a little while ago, we only had one answer. We stopped when we were done. But now we notice that there's two answers. But let's see, do both of these answers make sense? Well, if x is 6, that means that this side would be 6 and this other side would be 11. Well, we know that works. That makes sense. But what about the negative 11? The negative 11, that means one side would be negative 11 and the other side would be 5 more than that, which would be negative 6. And I know that multiplies to give me uh, positive 66, but can you have a side length of 11 and a side length of, ne uh, sorry, negative 11 and negative 6? No, so those don't work. So in this problem, this answer does not make sense. So the only answer for this problem is, well, my side lengths for this rectangle have to be 6 and 11. Now, you may be thinking, well, Dorcha, hey, uh, the other problem was much faster. Yes, it's much faster. But in a lot of these cases that we're going to be solving, we will have two possible answers. And unless you're going to check everything, every single possibility, we won't really know we're correct until we do it with algebra. So you're going to want to start using the algebra and starting to um, solve the problems using like factoring and some other ways that we'll learn later on. All right.